Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. More and more, trust me, more and more, and I travel a lot to different churches uh, in our country, you hear less and less. More and more, you hear less and less about the Holy Spirit. It's, it's rare to find a church that teaches on the Holy Spirit now. It's very, very rare. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, if, if you were to do research in, in Santa Clarita alone, there's probably like maybe two or three of us in the entire city of Santa Clarita, which is made up of like 90 plus churches um, that teach on the Holy Spirit. Uh, I know there is a church here that actually teaches against the Holy Spirit. Uh, they, they do a, an annual conference, and they call it Strange Fire. You can look at it. It's on YouTube. It's no, it's no secret, you know. It gets promoted big time. But I, I, when I have people, when I meet with people, and they, and they have an issue with Holy Spirit or they have issue with tithing, have you noticed that those are the two major ones that are always attacked is tithing and Holy Spirit? <laughs> it's always like tithing. It's, it's of the devil, uh, you know, they just want my money or the Holy Spirit, you know, that's just weird. That was like, that was for uh, Old Testament. But throughout Old Testament and New Testament, the Holy Spirit has always been in operation. As a matter of fact, if you really read your Bible at the beginning of Genesis chapter 1, where it says, and in the beginning, when God began to create out of the void of the earth, the Holy Spirit is the one that actually went and executed everything. Uh, so the Holy Spirit has been around since the beginning with the Father and the Son, right, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has a function. So I do these, these uh, services called Ignite to educate us on how we can learn to, to really have a, a, a desire and really crave the Holy Spirit. You have to be honest with yourself and say, do I really crave the Holy Spirit? And you have to ask yourself, like, do I really crave the Holy Spirit? Like, is the Holy Spirit really a person that I really want to get to know and I think most of us probably say I don't remember the last time I actually spoke to the Holy Spirit when pastor preaches on it then I talk to him and then I wait till the next ignite and then we talk again you know and that's okay that's okay it's not not condemn anyone but it's to remind us that that it is it is important it is so important it is crucial that we understand that we need the Holy Spirit in the days more than ever that we, that, that, that we live in today. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will, will guide you in many ways. Uh, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to, how to understand the Word of God. When you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit can teach you how to, how, I hear this a lot. I don't understand what the Bible is saying. Okay, well, let's hook up. Let's link up with the Holy Spirit because the Bible calls him your teacher. And there's no great, listen, the Holy Spirit is a better teacher than I am. I can tell you that right now. Uh, for example, um, it's funny. I'll preach a message, and I'll have like five people approach me, and they'll tell me something they got that I didn't preach at all. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like, I didn't say that. You know, I don't tell them that. I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, I didn't say that. I mean, it sounded cool what you got, but I didn't, definitely didn't say that. That wasn't even my sermon today, you know. <laughs> but it just shows you how the Holy Spirit will speak to each and every. See, the Holy Spirit was meant for individuals. Why did Jesus leave the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus can only connect with one person at a time. But the Holy Spirit can connect with everyone on this planet Earth at the same time. Individually. So individually, while you're hearing me preach tonight, like some of you got a revelation uh, probably way different than what I got, but that's the Holy Spirit. He taught you something. Like tonight, if, if a little light bulb went off and you're like, oh, my God, this is what this means. You think that was your bright idea? <laughs> no, that was the Holy Spirit giving you an understanding of something a little bit more profound that you needed tonight. And so the Holy Spirit is, is, is very much necessary more today, more today than ever before. Why? Because if the disciples needed the Holy Spirit in order for them to accomplish bringing the gospel of Jesus, Jesus Christ to us, then, then you know what? How much more do we need the Holy Spirit? They did not rely on a Bible. They relied on the Holy Spirit. Now today, they had to bring structure to us because they didn't want us to go a little bit weird. So they brought us structure. 
They brought us a manual. They brought us a role and responsibilities for those of you that are very administrative. He gave us a, uh, a job description. And the Holy Spirit has a job description as well. And so my, my hope is that we start craving and desiring, like that we would come to the place and say, you know what, Holy Spirit, I, I desire to know you more. Because he's not an it. He's not a dove. He's not a bird. He's not a plane. He's a person, right? He is a person. And a person can relate with you. The Holy Spirit can relate with you, and he wants to relate with you. But if you don't understand the role of the Holy Spirit, then, then you, you won't have a desire. Now, hopefully, by the, by the time I'm done tonight, you're going to be like, dang, I didn't know the Holy Spirit can do that. You're going to have a different mindset tonight. So I want to start with a verse real quick because I want us to um, just lay a little foundation. I want you to think about this. If, if a family member of yours had cancer, terminal cancer, okay? I had terminal cancer, and I had a miracle. But if your family had terminal cancer, and, um, and you knew that there was this little guy that wore feathers for clothing or leaves for clothing and lived in Cambodia, and he had medicine to heal cancer. And the person that has the cancer, someone that you dearly love, it can be your mom, your dad, your grandparent. It can be a child. Uh, I don't know. But would you do anything to go to Cambodia and go get that medicine? Or would you just be like, man, it's great to know that there's knowledge, that there's someone that has medicine to cure cancer. Um, I don't know about you, but if it was me, I would do anything to get to Cambodia and go speak with the little guy, to the little guy with the, 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 the leaf clothing and and beg him to give me the me I'd pay anything for that medicine. But let me tell you something. Jesus did more than that. Look at this. In John chapter 14, it says this. Watch this. He says, it prior verses than this, before this, he says, I got to go now. He says, I got to go to the Father. And then he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. You see, God went beyond Cambodia. <laughs> he went back to heaven. He, he thought it was so important for him to go back to the Father, for him to give us the Holy Spirit, because he knew that without the Holy Spirit, we're probably not going to make it. And so he says, and he will give you another helper. Look, he's the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor. Wow. Huh? Someone always praying for you. Wouldn't that be awesome if you, like, if someone tells me, like, Pastor, I pray for you every, I'm going to love that person. I'm going to be like, dang, I, I love you. you. You know, whatever you need. Well, this is the Holy Spirit that we don't acknowledge the fact that he's always interceding for us. He's always, when you, when you pray, the Holy Spirit is right next to you, and then he starts praying. When you don't know what to pray, but yet you pray, the Holy Spirit knows how to interpret what you're groaning on the inside. You may not know what the issue is, why you're feeling uneasy, uncomfortable, but the Holy Spirit knows how to interpret your spirit man on the inside. Therefore, the Holy Spirit then goes and becomes your representative says, hey, God, uh, Mauricio doesn't know why he's feeling like that. I do. Here's what's happening with him right now. See, he's about to meet up with some people that are going to try to harm him. And so I want to stand before you, and I'm asking you to help me help him as I bring him wisdom on how to handle this situation so that when he walks in there, those that thought were going to get him, ha-ha, I'm going to reveal some things to him before he even gets into that meeting. And you know what? That actually happened to me recently in the city. They thought they were going to bring some stuff to me, and the Holy Spirit gave me what to say. How does that work? I just felt impressed. I knew what to say. Don't tell me how I knew what to say. I just knew what to say. And at the end of it, the head city planner of Newhall said, very well said, Pastor, or, uh, Pastor Mauricio, very well said. Okay, we'll agree with you. And, and I'm thinking, I'm walking out there like, oh, my God, how'd that happen? Not smart enough to thought that one. But the Holy Spirit is intelligent. He's a person. Why wouldn't you want to hook up with someone intelligent, right? And so Jesus says, hey, listen, he's going to be your counselor. Anybody ever need a counselor? Come on, you spend a lot of money with counselors. Je Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit who's free 99. <laughs> There's no better counselor than the Holy Spirit. But you know why? The reason we don't trust or rely on the counselor, the Holy Spirit, is because 
You can't trust someone you don't spend time with. When you spend time with someone and you get to know someone, then you start trusting that person. And uh, when you start allowing yourself to start testing the Holy Spirit, and that's okay to test, you know, test and, and, and just be like, see what happens, see what God, you start doing that a little bit more, you know what happens? It becomes the normal of your life. You won't make a decision without the Holy Spirit giving you some direction. You won't. You won't buy a house without the Holy Spirit telling you this is the one. We get in so much trouble because we buy cars, houses. We take jobs that we were never supposed to take. Why? You didn't get counsel from the great counselor, the Holy Spirit. We need counsel. I know this may be foreign to some of us, but we can get back to that place, okay? So Jesus says, I'm leaving, but I got to go to the Father because I got to make sure he gets you what is what is going to be desperately needed here on the earth. You're going to need this counselor. You're going to need a strengthener. Come on, I'm weak. I'm tired. Guess what? Holy Spirit gets you right back up. He's your strengthener. Look, he's your standby. When you no longer have any more strength, you've already, you've already used up the strength he gave you. And you're just on the floor and you're just like tag him in like UFC. Just boom. And then he jumps in, right? Stand by. Isn't that what a standby is? Huh? That's like somebody stands in for you. Someone stands in for you, and you're covered. And that, that's, that's the whole, he's a person. He will be your standby. Look at this. He will be with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart. So guess what? If you resist the Holy Spirit, what do you think you're part of? The world. Yeah. Because he says the only people that resist him are world people. So if you have an issue with, I don't believe that whole, you're, you're, you, you have a little bit of, you have a little bit too much world. Not to say you don't love Jesus, but you just got too much world. What does the world do? The Bible says the world blinds you from the truth. What's the Holy Spirit called? He is the spirit of truth and will lead you into all truth. You can never get set free until you finally come to the complete truth, the Holy Spirit. He's the only one. If you think someone's lying to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. I promise you. Oh, I've caught people lying to me. I'm like, how'd you know? My kids especially. <laughs> how'd you know, Dad? Holy Spirit told me, Isaac. He's like, he, I remember he was a kid. He would get somebody. He's like, well, I might as well just tell you because the Holy Spirit's going to tell you anyways. You know, I was like, yeah. Yeah, exactly, bro. That's how we roll. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. They would always be like, the Holy Spirit tell you? Yep. He told me. Like, for real, he told Isaac, he told me. Alexis, he told me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The question is, when will you get to that, that place, that maturity level where you actually rely on the Holy Spirit? Where like, you know what? He's my counselor. You know what? I do have an attorney. I do have a representative, and he's very intelligent. And look, he says this, so he leads you into all truth, and you know him, he says, because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. I love that. So what does the Holy Spirit do? Obviously, the Holy Spirit never makes it about himself, so the Holy Spirit does four things. You can write down if you want. You don't have to, but if you want, if you're a note taker, you're awesome. If you're not, you can become one today, and you'll be awesome as well. Number one, he helps us to see Jesus more. Without the Holy Spirit, you'll never, you'll never know Jesus beyond just receiving him as Lord and Savior. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He helps you to see Jesus more. Just a little bit more, you start knowing Jesus more. Number two, he'll help you understand Jesus better. You'll understand him much better. Number three, uh, he'll help you respond to Jesus more obediently. More obediently. Like the things you don't want to do, it's like what, what Paul say. The things I, I, I want to do, I don't do. The things I hate to do, that I always do. <laughs> right? So what does the Holy Spirit do? He helps you to want to do or be the obedient believer, follower, Christian that God needs you to be, me and you, okay? Number four, he also will help us 
um, to love Jesus with a deeper heart of commitment. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is your conviction. So the Holy Spirit will always convict you. When you see, you can lie to anyone, but you can't lie to God. You can pretend in front of every, everyone you want, but you can't pretend with God. See, the Holy Spirit was given also. He says the Holy Spirit was given to convict the entire world, not to condemn. Hey, here's another thing. Stop trying to be the conviction. Stop trying to be the Holy Spirit for someone else's mistakes. Right? Let the Holy Spirit do that job. Okay, that's the Holy Spirit. He convicts us and, and doesn't shame us. Doesn't con he convicts you, and then that conviction leads you to repentance. That repentance leads you to change. Okay, that's what the Holy Spirit does. So what does he do? He helps you be a more committed believer. So if you're always trying like, man, I can never be committed to church. I can never be committed to God. I can never be committed to anything. You know why? Because you haven't hooked up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you commitment. He will. That's what he does. That's his role inside your life and my life. And I want to remind you again, once again, he needs us to allow him to penetrate our life. Okay, we got to stop being this resistant believer and we have to start being this immersed believer that's immersed with the spirit continually every single day we need the holy spirit every single day and it's to your benefit it's to my benefit you need the holy spirit if you want to be successful in your walk with god you need the holy spirit you need if you want to be successful in family in raising kids you need the holy spirit when you kick the holy spirit out you start becoming a very dull christian you become very just kind of like, ah, like here we go again, another song. It's just, it, there's no excitement anymore about it. There's just no more passion. You're just, you're barely making it in service. It's just like, oh my God, here we go. But when you're ignited with the Holy Spirit, man, you're just like, man, who am I going to go pray for right now? You know what I'm saying? Who am I going to go put some of my spit on some, you know? <laughs> you know, if Jesus used mud to open eyes and spit, I'm going to use some of my, you know, you're just like, you're waiting to open the next set of eyes. Like you're waiting to go pray for the next person. You're ready to go in a hospital and pray for someone who's sick. You see, when you no longer connect with the Holy Spirit, you become very dull in your Christianity. You become very dry, right? You become dry and, and you become moody, right? Always just negative, you know. People always ask, how are you doing? And it's like, mm. you, they don't even have to ask you. The face says it all, right? <laughs> so the Holy Spirit ignites your face. The Holy Spirit ignites your life. No matter how tough things may be going, listen to me. Think about it. We just read it. See, we are so quick to forget. He says he's the comforter. So if you're in pain, what does he do? Lifts you up. Comforts you. Right? When you feel like no one's praying for you, guess what? Lie. Someone is praying for you. He's your intercessor. Right? When you feel weak, he says, I'm your strengthener. Come on. He's your spiritual Red Bull, right? <laughs> he just kind of, you just, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. We need to understand the role of the Holy Spirit in your life. He lives in you. You might as well start acknowledging him. If you're a born-again believer, if you're a Christian, how many here are Christians? You're a born-again Christian, lift your hand. Guess what? He lives in you right now. That's awkward if you haven't talked to him. That is kind of like we're sitting, it's like, it's like, you know, me and Steve sitting and we're just like staring at each other like, <laughs> that's awkward, that's an awkward moment. Oh, guess what? This is an awkward moment right now. If you're just like, oh, I haven't even talked. He's in, the spirit of God is in you. Yeah. His spirit is in you right now. Right now. You're not alone. You're not alone. He's waiting for you to say, tag me. Come on, get me in. Allow me. Come on. I'm your standby. Pat me in. But guess what? He penetrates, but not when you have too many pores. Why don't I feel? Because you, you're just too. He can't get in. Isn't that beautiful about God? He gives you a free will. Like he's a, he'll never force himself. Like he doesn't just throwing stuff on you you know what i'm saying he's like come on tag me in give me permission that's what the holy spirit wants to do and you know what i want you to read this with me first corinthians 3 9 quickly we're almost done first corinthians 3 9 says this for we are what 
dang, your coworkers, that means you're all employed by heaven too. There's a job to get done, guys. It's not just go to church and just, you know, get bored after three years. The average Christian changes churches every three years, you know. It's not get bored and then let's go find the next exciting thing. You know what? That's fleshly. That's worldly. That, that means that it's, you're always making it about who? Me. <laughs> Let me go somewhere where I'm going to feel so much better. No. <laughs> the Holy Spirit makes you feel better. The Holy, Holy man, you know what? Even, if, let's say, let's say I've been to dead churches. I have, you know, um, and it's like more like the church of the dead. But just because I was in that <laughs> environment, just, be, but listen, but just because I was in the environment, I wasn't like, wow, this church is boring. You know what I would do? And I've done this every year. Every year I go to a church that's not my church on my vacation. Every year. I stir things up there. I get excited in that church. Like, hey, man, how you doing? Hey, man, what's your name? Anusha. Anusha. Very nice to meet you, Anusha. What do you do here, girl? And they're just like, who in the world is this guy? You know, I'm, they're, they're thinking I'm on staff or something. But I stir it up. I'm just like, well, like, why? I want them to know that there's Jesus in me. Come on, there's Jesus in you. Don't go to work all like, mm. <laughs> there, should be, there should be evidence, evidence, evidence. Come on, the devil already has all kinds of evidence on us, right? We might as well show some God evidence. Come on and say, man, we got some evidence that the spirit of God lives in me and that I can change an atmosphere in a room. I can turn, I have turned funerals that were like, and it was like, it's, I've done many funerals, probably over 300 funerals. And let me tell you something. I remember my last one. No, not my last one. I've had a few. Um, I'll never forget one of them. They had, I was the last speaker. And everybody just tore that place up. Like, it was like, oh, my. It was depressing. And I was like, oh, my God. Everyone is, like, crying. And everybody just, like, every person that walked up, it was like, it was really a funeral. It wasn't a celebration of the person's life. And I'm like, Lord, I'm like, and I'm like walking, I'm like, okay, and I'm praying in the spirit, I'm like, okay, God, what do I do? Huh? And let me tell you something, by the time I was done, I had everybody laughing in the room in a sensitive way. It wasn't my brilliance. The Holy Spirit knew how I can celebrate this person's life and bring joy back in the room. And I had everybody come tell me, hey, thank you so much because you, I've had people tell me, this was the best funeral I've ever been to. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, I know that's sensitive, but let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but when I go home to be with Jesus, I want a big party. Yeah. Don't be all like, huh? no. Come on, we got to, but guess what? But let's party while we're alive. Come on, let people talk about you while you're alive like Anusha, girl. You have changed this church. Oh, my God. We don't have to wait for Anusha to be 99 years old and gone to heaven. Be like, she, she never heard how amazing she was. You're amazing. You have. You've, has anyone met Anusha yet? Man, this girl is bomb. She's amazing. You know what? Most intelligent, brilliant girl and, and loves God. And, and, uh, and, and she puts together a lot of, like, our, our discipleship stuff. But let me tell you something. Brilliant, intelligent, you get around this girl and you just, you get excited about Jesus. I'm telling you, you, you want to celebrate people while they're alive. Right? And guess how that happens? Holy Spirit. Why? Do, what did you do? I didn't, man. Spirit of God. Why? Because I can't make it about me. I'm not good enough. But he is. He's so good. How'd you do that, Jesus? What do you mean? Jesus, I'm telling you. No, come on. Did you already come to this plan? No, I didn't. I actually was nervous <laughs> before I walked up. And I had to pray to God and ask God, God, what do I do? Please, you know, here's always my prayer. God, think through my mind, speak through my mouth. I always pray that prayer every time I preach. Think through my mind, speak through my mouth. Huh? Some of you probably get promoted at work if you started doing some of that, huh? <laughs> Not think through your mind, but think through his mind. And let him speak through your mouth. And imagine how much they're going to be like, are you the same person we hired? You know, I'm telling you. Let me, let me, let me, get, get, let me give you some, 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 uh, some, some good stuff. 2 Timothy 1.14, quick, let's hurry up. It says this, guard the good. Everybody say guard the good. Guard the good. Say it again, guard the good. Guard the good. 
Okay, guard the stuff. Guard the good stuff. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of who? I wonder what good you have in you. Like, if I were to ask you, like, hey, what's one good thing about you? You know, it better not be my hair. You know what I'm saying? It, it, there should be a, a characteristic quality that you say, you know what I'm good? I'm good at encouragement. Man, that's just good. I'm a good encourager. Dang, you better guard that, bro. Huh? And you know how you guard it? By the Holy Spirit. See, Cotton, I've known already for, Cotton, I've known you for 20 years. 20 years I've known Cotton. And Khan has always been the biggest encourager. And, and I'm going I'm to be honest, Khan. Like, when I first got saved, I was, you know, I was still working on this face and, you know, a lot of my issues. So when I'd see Khan, I'd be like, oh, Khan, because she was so happy. Just, but, you know, someone like me was dealing with a lot of issues. And she would come with joy, but she would change the atmosphere. I've known her for 20 years. This woman has always changed an atmosphere of dull to like, woo. She's like a party on steroids <laughs> when you meet Khan. It's true, Khan. It's true. Right, girls? Yeah, exactly. I, I know your mom, trust me. And she's, she's, and, and, but you know what? But I'm telling you, this woman has always been this, this jolly, and I've seen, I've been with them in their trials, in their darkest hours, and, uh, and in their greatest hours, okay? And, uh, and, but, but no matter what they've been through, the Holy Spirit is always evident in their life, no matter what. And so here he says, guard the good deposit cotton that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Okay, so real quick, what good deposit did God place in you? Well, let me give you a few of them. Number one, quick, write these down. If not, you can take a picture for some of you Holy Ghost intelligent people. It says, number one, look, I put this. Wisdom is one of the gifts that he gives. Okay, so what is wisdom? It means to recognize the importance of others and keeping God the center of your life. That's what wisdom is, okay? That's the wisdom I'm talking about. Number two, understanding. And I'm going to prove these to you, okay? I didn't come up with these. I brought these out of a scripture, and then I kind of defined it. Understanding is the ability to comprehend the meaning of God's message. In other words, I bring understanding. If someone says, what does that mean, pastor? I know how to bring understanding to God's word. That's a gift. That's not my gift. That's Holy Spirit gift. It's not like, wow, did you go to theology school? No, I've had theologians tell me, dude, what school did you go to? I didn't go to school. I got Holy Ghost teacher. And they're like, wow, you're pretty good. You know, I'm like, well, you know, Holy Spirit, man. You know, yeah. Holy Spirit University, right? HS University, right? You just, you just have to say that sometimes. Okay, so understanding the ability to comprehend the meaning of God's word. Okay, number three, knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. Man, knowledge is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Ability to think about and explore God's revelation. In other words, you get, a, uh, you get knowledge from God, and, and he gives you the revelation of it. Number four, counsel. Some of you, you have the gift of counsel. The gift of counsel. You know what? Counsel is the ability to see the best way to follow God's plan and our choices. That's counsel. Get with some good counselors. There's some good counselors in this church, but I think that some of the people in here, you don't know that you have that gift. Five, fortitude, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the courage to do what one knows to be right. Fortitude, that's a gift. That's not like, wow, they got, they got fortitude. No, they got Holy Spirit, man, that's a gift. Even people that are far away from God, they can, they can have a gift. They just haven't had the knowledge of where that gift came from yet. I'm telling you that right now. Number six, courage is the ability to confront fear in the face of your pain. Huh? Danger, uncertainty, and or intimidation. It doesn't matter. You know what? You have courage. That's a gift from God. When you have courage to just be like, man, we got this. It's going to be good. Here's how it's going to work out. We're going to face this thing right now. And you just deal with it. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. But there's other things like word of knowledge, which are your typicals. I didn't want to do that with you guys. I wanted to kind of switch it up for you guys because you already know words of knowledge, prophet, prophetic words, etc. But I'm talking about these other ones. These are gifts. Now the scripture to back that up is 1 Corinthians 12. Look at this, 1 through 11. Last verse, and let's get out of here and pray. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. Look at this. But the same what? Is the source of what? How many of them? All of them, right? So is it your intelligence? No. They're, it's a gift. It's a gift. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the what? 
God works in different ways, but it is the same what? Who does what? Who does the work? He does the work in you. He just needs an available person that says, choose me. I'll take that gift. I'll do it. I'll run with it. I'll, I'll be your counselor, God. See, no, very rarely do you find a Christian that says, God, I want to be your counselor. God, I want to be your wisdom. Right? God, I want to be your knowledge. God, I want to be your courage. Very rare do I hear Christians talk like that. Very rare. You know what Solomon's prayer was? What was Solomon's prayer? Give me what? To do what? To make a lot of money? He said, give me wisdom to lead your people. And God said, I have never heard anyone ask for that. Because you've asked me for wisdom, I give you wisdom and riches. And no one will ever be as rich as you for the rest of this entirety of this life. Isn't that amazing? God's just waiting for people to say, like, God, choose me for that. Like, let me operate in that counsel. Let me operate in that wisdom. Let me operate in that knowledge. God, just let me, and man, I'll use it for you. It's not for me. Come on. It's not about you. Look at two, three people be like, it's not about you. <laughs> stand to your feet. Let's go. Let's go. Let's stand to your feet. Let me finish this. Are you guys okay? You guys, y'all tired? Thank you. Listen, I've only had three hours of sleep in the last 24 hours, and I feel great. Holy Ghost, lit, everything, you name it. feel great. Four cups of coffee, but it's all good. Yeah. Coffee spiritual, guys. Just remember that, okay? There's a whole book on it. It's called Hebrews, right? <laughs> it's biblical, it, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, forget it. Okay, number seven, verse seven. A spiritual gift is given to each of, no, 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 no. A spiritual gift is given to each of, so we can help. Thank you. Is it about you? So when are you going to crave the gift that the Holy Spirit has placed in you? When? 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 Are we just going to keep going to church, doing the same thing? And then after three years, you get bored and then you go find the next happening thing. You know what? Why don't you be happening? If you be happening, things get happening. Huh? I want to be the church that's alive. But I need a church that's alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't need this. Woo, emotional roller coaster. No, we need some Holy Spirit-led people. Spirit-led that can say, Pastor, we can take this city. For Jesus. Everyone keeps hearing about Elevate Church in New Hall. I love that. But I want all of Santa Clarita to hear about New Hall, then LA County, then Ventura County, then Orange County. Let's let the word spread that God is doing something in his people. A gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. Look at that, great faith. How many would like to have great, the gift of great faith? Come on, man. Like faith that can move mountains. Whew. There's faith and then there's great faith. That means there's different levels of faith. Huh? He gives one person the power to perform miracles. How many would love the gift to perform miracles? What? I can do that? No, you can't. He can through you. Don't get it twisted, bro. <laughs> I'll give you the wisdom in that one. And another, the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from God, the Spirit of God, or from another spirit. In other words, sometimes you can have the wrong spirit. Someone's telling you something, and it's the wrong spirit. Oh, no, I'm telling you, this is what you got to do. The Bible says test every spirit and know whether or not it is from God. And that goes also from other Christians. Just because they're Christian, don't believe them. Let me say that again. <laughs> Just because they're Christians, don't believe them. Oh, but they're so nice. So was the devil at one point. He was nice at one point. He was the worship leader. Don't, don't, don't just open yourself to every, oh, because they're so spiritual. I've noticed that most religious people are the ones that always have the wrong spirit. 
We need to have a spirit of love. You hear me? Okay, and then he says, and to another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and the only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He is the one and he is the only who distributes all. He is the distributor of gifts. Why aren't we going to the distributor of gifts? He alone decides which gift each person should have. What's your gift? I don't know, Pastor, tell me. Nope, go hook up with the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you. <laughs> Lift your hand to heaven. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.